You're watching the news on Bahrain Television. A very good evening. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and Head of the Commonwealth received today His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa in Buckingham Palace. The meeting reviewed the solid historic relations linking the two friendly countries, which are based on cooperation and mutual respect. His Majesty the King lauded the vital role played by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in enhancing these bilateral ties. The two sides also discussed joint efforts in developing relations between Bahrain and the UK in all the different fields in addition to exchange views on a number of issues of mutual concern. His Majesty the King has earlier today arrived in the British capital London and was received by a member of the Conservative Party at the House of Lords and representative of Buckingham Palace, Mr. James Yonker, and Bahrain's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. His Royal the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa arrived earlier today at Doha International Airport and was received by the Prime Minister, Minister of Interior Sheikh Abdullah bin Nasser bin Khalifa Al Thani and a number of officials. His Royal expressed his deepest condolences to the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani and Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, Al Thani family members and the people of Qatar following the demise of Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad Al Thani. The Crown Prince praised the late Emir's efforts and achievements in serving Qatar and all Arab and Islamic nations. His Highness highlighted the contributions of the late Emir alongside regional leaders in establishing and developing the Gulf Cooperation Council. For their part, the Emir of Qatar as well as Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani expressed their gratitude to His Highness the Crown Prince for his kind visit during this difficult time.
His Highness, the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of the Bahrain Athletics Association, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at his majlis in Rafah 70 athletes with disabilities in the presence of the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar, president of the Bahrain Disabled Sports Federation, the BDSF, Sheikh Mohammed bin Da'i Al Khalifa, and a, major, and a number of the Federation's trainers and administrative council members. His Highness expressed pride in the achievements of the disabled players in various championships, noting their success in honoring the kingdom. He went on to convey the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, stating His Majesty's firm stance about the necessity of providing various forms of support to people with special needs through integration in all fields. His Highness also conveyed the greetings of the representative of His Majesty the King for charity work and youth affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, noting his efforts in supporting disabled sports through creating programs that aim at achieving the directives of His Majesty the King in the field of youth and sports. He hailed the efforts of the BDSF in creating programs capable of improving disabled sports and contributing and enhancing the capabilities of the players, wishing the Federation every success.
The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired today the weekly meeting where the Council approved the Arab Convention for the Transfer of Inmates at the Penal and Correctional Institutions, the Agreement between Bahrain and India for Cooperation to Combat Terrorism, Organized Crime and Illegal Trafficking of Drugs and Narcotics, Psychotropic Substances and Precursor Chemicals, as well as the Arab Convention to Combat Cybercrimes. The Council also reviewed letters from the government regarding financial disclosure and amended laws of establishing the National Institution for Human Rights. They also discussed granting reclamation land to housing projects and discussed a recommendation regarding assigning qualified Bahrainis as sign language teachers for the Ministry of Education. The council then approved cessation of signing and or rather singing and dancing events in respect to the current tragic situation in Yemen, Iraq and Syria. The Minister of Commerce, Industry and Tourism, Mr. Zayed bin Rashid Azayani, stated that establishing strategic partnerships with neighboring countries and people of expertise would only push the development process forward. This came during the first Arab-European conference organized by the Kingdom of Bahrain, in which Mr. Zayani heads the Bahraini delegation participating in the events of the Euro-MENA conference on public management held under the patronage of the Sultan of Amman, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed Al Said, from the 24th to the 27th of this month. This conference is organized by the Middle East and North Africa Public Administration Research Manapar Network in partnership with the European Group of Public Administration EGPA and Aix Marseille University. During the commencement of this conference, the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Tourism hailed the joint cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Oman, which signifies as the keenness of both countries to benefit their people. The Director General of Bahrain Institute for Public Administration, BIPA, Dr. Raed bin Shem, stated that the Kingdom of Bahrain has made considerable leaps in the area of the development of public administration and research support, making it a center for scientific research in the Arab world today and considering BIPA, a regional think tank that works closely with public management institutes in their efforts of achieving further development. Dr. Bin Shams also stated that this conference would work on providing a resource database for the effective bodies on public administration to use as a guide for the process of decision and policy making that would significantly enhance government performance, especially considering the 250 participants from 16 countries globally and regionally. The conference will also discuss updating the Human Resources Administration as well as the performance of public organizations in addition to a number of topics of common concern. The United Nations team in Bahrain organized an event last night to commemorate the 71st anniversary of the founding of the UN Charter. More details in this report. The UN Day is celebrated all around the world to mark the founding of the United Nations in 1945. This year marks the international body's 71st anniversary. The Kingdom of Bahrain joined in the global occasion to celebrate the international achievements. Today marks a special day. It marks the uh, 71st anniversary of uh, the United Nations Charter. It also marks the uh, 45th anniversary of uh, Bahrain's membership of the United Nations Organization. Uh, looking back at the previous year, uh, the 70th session, uh, there has been lots of achievements internationally. Uh, the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, the uh, signing of the uh, Climate Agreement in Paris. The highlight of the UN Day commemoration this year is the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, and the steps being taken to ensure their implementation. We would like, are very grateful for the government of Bahrain who is hosting the UN agency here and also contributing to its programs uh, to be able to focus, as we heard today, to reach the citizens. And uh, uh, we have developed uh, a strategic cooperation framework that aligns uh, all our interventions in Bahrain to the government plan and to the SDGs. Guests from different age groups and entities were in attendance. To them, the UN Day comes as a celebration of global collaboration in the name of achieving international goals that are built on a shared and unified vision. I would like to say uh, happy anniversary, 71st for United Nations. And uh, as we said, United Nations is a very important part of the world. Okay, for the peace and uh, for all countries. But the UN is, I, I think it's really important in the world today. And I think it's really important that we celebrate it every year. And then it just puts more emphasis on uh, that we need world peace and that we need to work together to achieve that. And I think with the new uh, SDGs, 
the sustainable development goals uh, that we just got. Okay, I think that's another step in the right direction. Reporting for Bahrain Television News, this is Mohamed Shaban. The activities of the Joint Naval Drill Bridge 17 continued with the participation of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force and the Eastern Fleet of the Royal Navy in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The forces participating in the drill began their military exercises to become fully prepared for the drill stages. The drill is an essential tool in enriching command structure and combat experience within the two countries' forces to accommodate the requirements of joint military action. It also upgrades combat readiness, the exchange of military skills, ways of enhancing joint coordination and achieving integration and joint naval operations. Throughout the drill, all procedures, combat operations and tasks were performed skillfully and in record time. The exercises were marked with compatibility and the spirit of unified joint action.